So I made a video on this lady here who was rumored to be writing Captain Marvel 2 and people told me the article was fake. Now, you know, maybe it is, maybe I don't have a great source, but I kind of believe she's at least going to be involved and on the staff because she's a real writer. I found that out. And I'm going to play a video clip of this writer and you guys tell me if you think it fits the narrative of Brie Larson and today's, well, feminism in movies. She seems a little crazy. Here we go. So this is from an interview and you're going to see her and you can make up your mind for yourself. Her name is Kelly Sue DeConnick. By the way, this video has 124 likes and 875 dislikes, including mine. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Now, superhero comics, at their core, they're, they're built on the foundation of, you know, the, the strong, you know, the big strong heroes going and help the little guys, the people yes. who are oppressed. Essentially what feminism is about. Yes, exactly. Right? This is this is always when people are like, would you please get your politics out of my comic books? I'm like, what comic books are you reading? Where is the apolitical comic book that you're reading? I'm like, I want to go back to the comic books we were reading in my youth. The 70s, when they were incredibly political and not even... Or you go back to this, the Ditko Spider-Man yes. issues, which was, uh, he was, Peter Parker was getting bullied and, yes. and traumatized at school. Yes, I'm sorry to break this to you. But Captain America is a social justice warrior. I know you mean that as, a, as, a, as an insult, but there's just no, like, that is the definition of what he is, you know? And if oh, all you want to no. read are, I don't know, books about, I, I literally oh. can't even think of what would be. You're right, if, if, if Cap had a Twitter account, He'd yeah. be a, an SJW for sure. <laughs> yes, I mean, and that's not a bad thing. Chris Evans does. I mean, and, he's a, Chris um, Evans. And as far as, like, yes. Is an SJW for sure. Yes, and, uh... And that's not an insult. No. All right, let's stop right here. So, we have a fundamental misuse of SJW social justice warrior. Now, there's a few definitions, and one of those definitions is good. Here, where I live, in Tokyo, we've got social justice warriors fighting for rights for handicapped people, women, things like that. That's the good kind. That's a good social justice warrior. We also have social justice warriors who just kind of fight for society, I guess. Like, she said Captain America. He's a social justice warrior because he fights for the little guy. Feminism and Brie Larson is not fighting for the little guy. Feminism and Brie Larson is saying we want more women in movies because they're not represented. And not only that, we're going to have them beat the crap out of all the men. And we're going to take all the men heroes and trade them for women heroes. It's not a fair, equal thing. So, also, furthermore, let's keep going. Social justice warrior is somebody who wants to correct the past, okay? They see these movies from the 80s, they think there are too many male leads, they think there are too many white people in the movies, and they want to change those movies so they now have a history where those movies are corrected for everybody, which is theoretically a good thing. But what I'm saying is we need to put in new characters. Don't ruin the old characters that happen to be white dudes, okay? Or happen to be men and switch those out and ruin their legacies. Like, you know, Batman runs away. He's a coward. So, what happens? Batwoman steps in. Luke, well, yeah, you know, what happened is he saved the galaxy, but then he became someone who tried to kill his own nephew and he ran away from the fight. Well, now Ray comes in. Things like that. Well, Ghostbusters, nowhere to be seen. They're all happen to be women now. All right? We'd have much different interactions with each other if these movies respected the old characters. So it's not simply about that we don't like women as powerful people in society. It's that they're treating the old characters we loved and respected like crap. So this woman will never acknowledge that. They will never acknowledge that. That's why I'm here doing this. Because someone's got to acknowledge it. And other channels you guys like as well are doing it in the same way. Let's keep going. May I curse? Yeah, she can curse. Yes, he gives a f you know? Like, he cares about people who don't happen to be wealthy actors. Um, uh, he cares about people who weren't born with the privilege that he was born with. Um, and that is what Captain America does. Captain America stands up for what I think we wish this country would, was. You know, I think the, the, the ideals that we have always stood for but not always acted on. Right. Um, and, uh...
But what Captain America doesn't do is Captain America doesn't replace a character people have already loved for his own political purposes. That's the thing they'll never say. All they're doing is pulling the wool over the eyes of people who just don't quite know any better, who aren't, you know, in the loop with this political game. Bitch Planet, pretty deadly. That's yeah. quite the variety of books under one umbrella. When some of the more reactionary comic book fans, um, what my academic friends like to call the normative comedy comic book reader, um, which is, by the way, like, such a myth, because... We're all we freaks and geeks. Well, we could go through... I, I could go through the history of uh, the evolution of the comic book industry and how this idea that it is... Um, uh, that the core readership of comic books um, uh, is white boys is very recent in our evolution. We have a long history, and it, that is really a very small part of it, but we have a really short memory in this industry. Um, but, you know, a book called Calling All Girls that was largely comics sold 500,000 copies in the 40s, you know, like... Girls read comics. Girls have always read comics. If we had more time, I would talk to you about manga and what that proved about the market. Um, but there's nothing, <laughs> there is nothing inherently masculine about words and pictures. There is nothing inherently masculine um, about uh, uh, science fiction uh, or pulp. There is, um, you know, any, and nothing in the history of our uh, industry is inherently masculine. There's not in, in this idea that heroism is inherently masculine is a, is flawed thinking anyway we can go we can have a little conference on that um but i think any it, my point being that some of uh some of the men with short memories um who are so threatened by um myself and and my female colleagues and and some of the books that we make that bring different perspectives um who feel that we are taking something away from them well, here's the problem. First of all, she said she doesn't have time to get into manga, and she doesn't have time because she doesn't know shit about manga, probably. I've been here in Japan 15 years. Uh, my wife reads manga every night, and I pass by bookstores, and I observe people looking through manga every day. And, yes, there are definitely women who read manga. Absolutely. Probably more in the States manga readers that are women than comic book readers who are women. But... There is also something that sells manga, and that is actually, well, very sexy girls. And that's the fact. And if you walk around here in Japan, yeah, you see guy manga characters, but, you know, the ones that are really flaunted are the sexy women on the cover. Not going to get too into that, but, yeah, I'd love to talk to this lady about manga. She also said that I was threatened. Here's the big thing. Threatened. I'm threatened by these female characters. I'm not threatened. What I'm upset about is that you're taking the characters from the past and replacing them. It's the replacement that's irritating and very insulting, actually. If you just had a great, strong female character like Beatrix Kiddo from Kill Bill, who whoops everyone's ass, or Sarah Connor the way she was in, you know, T1 and T2, she whoops everyone's ass. That's amazing. I love that. I've been over this Katniss from Hunger Games. She's awesome. She's totally original. Why would I be like, oh, Katniss, she's a girl, I'm threatened, she shoots a bow so good, oh my god. No, she's awesome. But when you take somebody who is like Captain Marvel, and she's just sold automatically as the biggest, most powerful, amazing character ever, and, you know, her presence there makes it so she can't even be in Endgame, she's so powerful, it kind of works a little bit weird. There's no weakness, there's no real struggles in the same way Ray has no real struggles. She just comes in and, you know, she's awesome. She's amazing. She's absolutely the best. And Brie Larson's attitude outside of the movie doesn't help saying, I don't like white dudes. And she wants to press her feminist message. You know what? Keep that stuff out of entertainment. That's the whole thing. You know, look, I'm sure down in my heart of hearts I can hear these people out and I'm sure they make some okay points, all right? It's unfair to say I'm 100% right or we're 100% right. They're 100% wrong. But the meanings of words they're using just get a little bit twisted out of context, especially with Social Justice Warrior, because SJWs we're talking about are people who want to change the entertainment we've built all along. And nobody said that comics of the past were exactly masculine, or they had to have masculine heroes. That's all I'm saying, and I just think that's really fair. 
And now the country's getting more mixed, and naturally, you know, movies and comics are getting more mixed, which is great, and that does represent what America is becoming today, but there's no need to put down the characters of the past because of that. It's better just to move forward naturally, together, and, you know, it seems that an SJW warrior, in the entertainment sense, and the way she is, wants to belittle the way the past was and say it was wrong. It wasn't wrong, I just think it was naturally the way things evolve. Anyway, I'm doing shoutouts, special thanks, things like that. Click that subscribe button if you haven't. I will see you next time. If you are not subscribed to this channel, The Entertainment Hacker, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button now.